Good morning or afternoon. All right, so this is probably Thursday. I guess I don't know when you're doing your school, but this would be our fourth lesson this week. So we're going to be using worksheets eight and nine today, and today is also the day that you might need to go back and look at the worksheets that we had last week. Remember when we were putting together a sentence? Keep that in mind. All right, so let's look at our worksheet that says reading lesson one, day eight. It has it up there at the top. Now, this is going <clears> to <throat> go over what we read yesterday. We read Genesis chapter three, which talked about, remember what it talked about? It was um, the serpent in the garden and what he talked to Eve and then what they did and what happened and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's what it is. So keep thinking of that. If you can't remember, go back and read it if you want to. It's all of chapter three. It's just 24 verses. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to answer A, B, and C on this page, on this worksheet. And then I'm going to give you an assignment to complete, and it's going to be due by tomorrow. Make sure, I know tomorrow's Friday, but you can turn it in either tonight or tomorrow. Um, you can take a picture, like I said, you can take a picture, you can scan it, whatever you want to do. You can send it to me in the mail. Now, if you do put it in the mail, make sure you put me a note on Google Classroom. Hey, Michelle, I sent it in the mail, so you should get it in a day or two. Make sure I know that because I want to make sure you do it, okay? All right, so answer these questions about the passage that we read yesterday from Genesis 3. What is the plot of this account? Now, these do not have to be written in complete sentences. These are just phrases, words, whatever, okay? Now, a good way to do this is to put like a number one and or an A and write it, a B or a two and write it, and a C or a three and write it, okay? So what was the first thing that happened in this account? What would you say? Well, it started out by talking about the serpent. Maybe serpent was in the garden, okay? So I'd put number one, serpent in the garden, okay? And I'm gonna go fast, so you're probably gonna have to pause it, okay? All right, so the first thing, the serpent was in the garden. Let me, so I can keep a track of this. Okay, so I'm gonna jot this down. Serpent in garden. Okay, the second thing that happened, now we're gonna put, you wanna put about five or six things. So we're gonna have five or six sentences here. So, so the first one was the serpent was in the garden. What was the second thing that happened? Remember, we were in second grade, we were putting these in order. Now we're still putting them in order, but we have to pick them out from what we read, the account. So serpent in the garden, um, what happened next? He lied to Eve, okay? Serpent lied to Eve. The third thing that happened was Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. So Adam and Eve ate the fruit. Adam and Eve ate the fruit. What happened next? God cursed the serpent, the woman, well, he didn't really curse the woman, but God cursed the serpent and all of creation because of man, okay? So anytime people say, how could a loving God allow this to happen? Well, the reason that they're starving, the reason that people die, the reason that people get cancer, the reason that there are car wrecks, the reason that there are all the bad people and bad things in the world is not because of God. Could God stop it? Well, of course he could, but he cursed the ground because of what man did. God didn't bring bad into the world. Man did. So now we have to suffer with the consequences until God says it's over. So, okay. So the serpent was in the garden. The serpent lied to Eve. Adam and Eve ate the fruit. Um, God cursed the creation. We'll just say he cursed the creation because even the serpent, I guess, was a creation. God cursed the creation. The fifth thing that happened was what? What did he, at the end, what did he tell them? He kicked them out of the garden. 
God kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden. Okay, and if you want to put a sixth thing there, you could put that he um, he put a, a guard over the door to the garden so that nobody could ever get in again. You could put that if you want to, but you don't have to. All right, so what we just wrote is the plot of Genesis chapter 3. Now look at part B on the worksheet. Does the story have a recognizable beginning, middle, and end, and how do you know? Well, I'd say yes, because what happened at the beginning? There was a section at the beginning. The beginning of that account was that the serpent was in the garden, and he starts talking to Eve, and he lies to her. Okay, that's the beginning of it. The middle part of the story is where Adam and Eve took of the fruit and ate of the fruit. Then they tried to hide from God. And then the end of that account was that God gave the curse because of the sin that man had done and kicked them out of the garden. So do you, can you see how easy that is? It has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. Okay? Now, it says how do you know well, because it tells us in the beginning, this you know, this is what happened here, and then it flows well. Everything it's not just you know, because sometimes you might read things and it says here and this and that, and it's kind of and you kind of reading. Oh wait, wait, what? This should have been set up here. No, this is this Genesis three flows very smoothly, and everything happened in order. That's the probably the best way you know everything happened in order. Part C. How does the plot, which is what we wrote, connect with the story's theme? If you're not sure of what the story's theme is, think about the story's message. All right, so let's think of it. The message of Genesis 3 is the fact that man caused the curse on the world. Man is the reason why the world is not good, not God. Man, would you agree? Man is the cause. So I'd say the theme of this Bible account that we read, the, the theme of Genesis 3 is that God, that man is the cause of bad things, not God. Now, so now that we know the theme, does the plot go with it? Does it support it? Yes, it does. <laughs> because it shows the progression of what happened in the plot and it goes right along with the theme telling us that God wasn't the car, the cause of the curse it was man now does the plot connect to the message in some way that's what we just answered that question yes it connects to it perfectly well so I hope this makes sense to you this was Genesis 3 is a very simple um, account in, to get the plot and the theme and that kind of stuff. So remember the theme is what it teaches. It's what the story teaches. And the theme that was taught in Genesis 3 is that man is the cause of the curse of the earth, not God. And the plot that we wrote down goes right along with that. So let's look at the next worksheet, day nine. This is the last worksheet. All right, now I will, this is your assignment and I'm going to grade you on it. All right, now it says, write a paragraph describing what happened in the Bible passage that you read for the week. Be sure to include each main event. Well, each main event is the plot summary that we wrote. Okay, now, this is taking us back to that, what we did last week when we were writing and we were going to put it all together to write one sentence. And in fact, if you'll look at the bottom of this page, it says, then identify the most important information in the paragraph above that is essential to understanding the story. Use letters to identify the most important things in your paragraph. Remember, you'd put the, the letter where it goes, you know, like this is A, this is whatever. And then you're going to list each of these items with that letter that you assigned figure out how to organize them, and then write them in one sentence. Make sure you use the letters to identify them in the sentence. So, on 
the top part of this where it says to write a paragraph describing what happened, you're not just going to write these. Now these need to be included in there, but you're gonna write it a little bit, it's gonna be more info in there. So, you know, something like, I'm not gonna write the whole thing, but something like, um, this is gonna have to be done solely by you. I don't wanna do this myself because I wanna, I wanna get it from you. I don't want to let you see mine. I want to see yours. Um, so something like you're just going to sum up Genesis 3. You know, the serpent was in the garden. He started talking to Eve. He told her lies and he told her that um, she uh, would become as God, that she would not die. Um, and so at the where you put the serpent was in the garden, you would want to put A there because, or one, whatever, wherever you put on this because that goes with this, okay? And then you're gonna go through, you know, and then, so Eve took the fruit and she ate and then she shared with her husband, Adam, and then um, they knew they were naked, you know, so you're just gonna kind of write a paragraph of basically, you're just gonna sum it up in a paragraph. Then you're going to go through and you're going to mark those things with letters A, B, C, D that you think are important enough to the story to put in your, your sentence because you're going to narrow it down to telling what happened in one sentence. One sentence. Remember like we did last week. Okay, so this is kind of taking it backwards. A lot of times you learn how to expand sentences to make your paragraphs, but we're doing it backwards. We're taking a paragraph and we are gonna tell what happened in a sentence. Make sure you follow these instructions. It's very easy, it's what we did last week. Okay, and when you're finished with your sentence, make sure that you use the letters in your sentence that go along with the plot that, that you wrote up here. So this whole worksheet, day nine, is what I want to see. Your final sentence should be at the very bottom. And remember, one sentence. One sentence. It can be hard sometimes, but you can do it. So when you're done, I want to see that. Remember, if you're going to put it in the mailbox and send it to me, put me a note on Google Classroom so I'll be waiting on it in the mail. Or you can snap a picture. Um, and text it to me, or you can email it, scan it, whatever you want to do. Just make sure you get it to me some which way by tomorrow, okay? If you're not clear, if you need some more help, call me or text me, okay? That's all for this week.